The universe is not designed to be a trap, but you can still entrap yourself into unresolved conflicts, upsets over the past, and the guilt and anger one feels over what one has done to others and what one has suffered at another's hands. Today, we're going to focus on the theory and exercises necessary to learn and perform in the advanced levels of TROM that free you of such burdens. If this is your first time watching, I'll bring you up to speed on the basic theory and practice of TROM and move forward from there. TROM stands for the resolution of the mind. It's a self-studied, self-applied practice that does just that. It shows you how to resolve your mental and spiritual condition, and you can learn all about it on our YouTube videos and the free ebook we've published. The mind is a series of bookmarks in the past of data and events considered important. The importance of these events is assigned either voluntarily or by enforcement. Eventually, past upsets catch up to one and can overwhelm one in the present, much against one's own will. Trom exercises have you compare the past to the present by bringing the past into the present, which not only breaks the illusion of time, but also reduces the importance of the past so it no longer has a troubling influence on you. One needs to be firmly grounded in the present in order to do this. You learn how on level one with a simple exercise of placing mental creations around you. Level 2 starts you viewing objects and people from the past side by side with objects in the present and comparing the two. For example, comparing a knife in an incident where one was threatened to a knife in the present can prove helpful in relieving one's involuntary aversion to knives. Once one can comfortably view past objects and people to objects in his present time environment, he moves on to level 3, viewing past incidents simultaneously with his present environment, further discharging the power one's past has over his present. Now that one has completed level 3, it's time to address the very structure of the conflicts and overwhelms that led to the upset by doing levels 4 and 5. Let's start with some basic terminology. Time-breaking is the simultaneous viewing of the past and the present. Its purpose is to reduce the apparent importance of the past so one can live more fully in the moment. A postulate is a desire, intention, purpose or goal. Though there are infinite possible postulates one could make, the four basic postulates are to know, to not know, to be known, to not be known. When you communicate, you want to know and be known to the other, and the other wants to know you and be known to you. When one creates something like a piece of artwork, and he wants others to see it, he postulates that work to be known. He wants others to know it. When one is hiding, he postulates to not be known. Postulates in agreement are complementary postulates. When postulates are in conflict, we have a game. Whether that game is something played for fun, like hide-and-seek, where someone wants to know where you are and you want your location not known, or a more serious, real-life game, where you are trying to get hold of someone with an urgent message, yet they're avoiding you. That last would be a conflict of you wanting the message to be known to them, and the other is trying to not know you and your message. A person who serves summons for court appearances plays this game for a living. Games end when postulates agree on both sides. When the seeker discovers the one who is hiding, the person who is hiding is now in the postulate of to be known, forced out of their to not be known postulate. When the summons server delivers the court order to the one that's been avoiding them, the game ends with the person evading the summons being forced out of their not-known postulate as they are forcibly presented and now must know that order for them to appear in court. 
In the case of games like hide-and-seek, we apply the terms win and lose. But in the case of more serious games, we use the terms overt and motivator. The one who overwhelms the other commits the overt, and the one overwhelmed receives a motivator. We call games like hide-and-seek voluntary games, but the more serious ones we call compulsive games. When compulsive games are played, we add the word must to the postulates involved. The police officer trying to catch the criminal must know that criminal, and the criminal must not be known to the cop. The one avoiding the summons must not know that summons or the summons server, and the summons server must be known to the person being served, and the document he has to serve must be known as well. Imagine a child catching a frog. He brings it home to mother, and she screams. He hides the frog in his hands. Then his father comes along and asks what's in his hands. That would be an example of postulating must be known, then someone forcing them into must not be known with their must not know postulate. And then once they decide it must not be known, someone wants to know it. This sequence of postulates changing one to another is not only how the game of life is structured, but also how the conflicts in the mind accumulate whether the subject matter is court documents, works of art, or weapons of mass destruction. When one overwhelms you with the postulate that they or something must be known, and forces you into the must-know postulate, they commit the overt by forcing you to know, and you receive a motivator by being forced to know. But let's say someone tries to make something known to you, and you successfully avoid knowing it. That is your overt and their motivator. There are other kinds of overwhelms, and you can learn about them from the TROM 101 videos on this channel, and from reading the book. On TROM Level 4, you stimulate the mind by getting the idea of each type of overwhelm, one after another, and thus spring forth sensations, emotions, and events to be time-broken, and therefore resolved in the mind. This is much like Level 3, except instead of choosing what events you wish to time-break, you are now using a systematic method of forcing them into your mind. This relieves the burden of whatever misdeeds you've committed in the past, and those that have been committed against you. Confess your sins to a minister, and ask for forgiveness if your religion requires it, but with TROM therapy, you can confess them to yourself and only yourself, if that is your preference. Level 4 handles overwhelms. Overwhelms end compulsive games. But before the overwhelm occurs, there is a conflict, a struggle to resist the other person's postulate. All of us have had many different conflicts in our lives, and many of these conflicts were never truly resolved and can still play out in your mind. Anyone who has found themselves arguing with someone in their head or has regrets over a past event knows this. While you would prefer to leave some things in the past, your mind says otherwise. These leftover conflicts from the past are the business of Level 5. Before I describe Level 5 of Trom, I must remind the viewer that this video is for the purpose of educating you in TROM theory and giving you a preview of what you have to look forward to in the practice of TROM. But do not attempt any of TROM's levels 2 through 5 until you've completed the level or levels before it. Level 5 takes postulate conflicts and overwhelms a step further in that now you are not only getting the idea of the postulate in your own head, but you are getting the idea of your opponent's postulate as well. You do this by placing the opponent's postulate in an object or place, such as a stapler on your desk, the TV set, or even the wall. When you are forced to know, there is the opponent's postulate of must be known, and also your postulate, the one your opponent forced you to take on of must know. You get the idea that your opponent is aiming a must-be-known postulate at you. Then you get the idea that you must know. You are stimulating your mind with the postulate overwhelm like you did in Level 4, 
but now you are taking both sides into account. And just like in level 4, you time break whatever shows up. And you continue doing this exercise with both postulates until you are comfortable doing this and nothing shows up for you to time break anymore. The incident where the process server forced you to receive the summons, for example, and other such incidents may appear during the course of this exercise. You time break such so they will trouble you no more. Now that you've finished with that exercise, you will now put the postulate of must be known in an object near you, and you will resist it with the postulate of must not know. Further incidents will show up, and you time break all of those like you've been doing. Now the time just before you receive the summons and you're trying to avoid the process server and other such incidents of someone trying to show you something and you resisting seeing it may also show. Do you see what we're doing here? You start with a pair of postulates where you were overwhelmed. Then you address times where you were resisting such overwhelm. Because in life, before you were overwhelmed, you resisted, and it happened in that order. In doing TROM exercises, you run the conflicts and overwhelms in the reverse sequence they occurred in life. If you think about it, if you went from point A to point B, then point C and got stuck there, the way to get back would be from point C to point B to point A. Therefore, TROM exercises such as levels 4 and 5 have you confront the overwhelms and conflicts that happened in your life in reverse? In Dennis Stevens' book, all of the possible postulate overwhelms as well as the conflicts in between are put on a chart in the order you need to run them in TROM therapy. I don't expect you to understand all of this immediately, but I wanted to give you an insight into how TROM therapy works and why doing these exercises will resolve conflicts in your mind and ease the burden of guilt and anger over the misdeeds you've committed on others and others have committed on you. If you take away anything from this video, it should be that there are conflicts that occur in real life, and those conflicts are stored in the mind, still affecting the way you think and act in the present, and there is a way to understand the anatomy and sequence of such conflicts, and techniques for resolving them in your mind. If you've missed the previous video entitled Time Breaking, The Illusion of Time Explained, I invite you to watch it now. To gain a fuller understanding of how TROM exercises work to resolve your mind, download and read the book TROM 2023 from the link in this video. Getting started is easier than you think. You only need read the first few chapters before starting on level 1 of TROM. You can study as you go for the rest of the levels. You don't need to be any sort of genius to do these exercises. You don't have to go to years of college to learn all the psychological theories mankind has dreamt up. You need not hire a therapist or see a minister. With the data on this channel that we offer you, you have the power to resolve your own mind and spiritual condition, working by yourself, paying no one and answering to no one working in secret if you like. We ask nothing in return for this. Our reward is the satisfaction of you knowing what we know now. Imagine a simple mental exercise that brings you into the moment. Imagine understanding the illusion of time and being able to break it. Imagine ending the conflicts from the past once and for all. We are DIY Salvation. Don't just use your mind, resolve it.